everybody, and welcome to what possibly will be one of the final episodes of Seen on Screen ever. Uh, sitting in here with me today is Professor James Morrison of Claremont McKenna College, and we are going to talk about torture porn. And uh, for those of you who don't know, torture porn, that, that specific term was, was coined by uh, uh, the journalist Paul Edelstein in New York Magazine several years ago, and it's sort of synonymous with uh, splatter films, which have been around for quite some time. But uh, my question for you is, is what, what, what in, your, in your idea is, is torture porn? Well, uh, I think it's probably easiest to define in terms of the genre that has emerged in the last 10 years that many would recognize around the movies like the Saw films, uh, of which I believe there are now four. Yep, one every uh, year, basically. Uh, yeah, and things like Hostel. Uh, the one that I think brings the genre into the most interesting focus for uh, somebody who's trying to think about what films mean is uh, Funny Games, uh, which you could say both kicks off the cycle and we might hope ends it because uh, the film's director, an Austrian named Michael Hanka, made uh, a version of this film in 1997 in uh, uh, his native Austria, and uh, remade it almost shot for shot in the United States, uh, and it was released just about a month and a half ago, mm -hmm. and spent uh, two weeks in theaters before disappearing. Uh, we might hope forever, but probably <laughs> not. These things have a way of returning. Um, uh. And it's a film in which a, a sort of upper middle class family goes off to their lavish vacation home to seemingly well-mannered young men enter the house on the pretext of borrowing some eggs for the neighbor. And they then take the family captive and proceed to torture them and uh, eventually, spoiler alert, uh, kill them all. And uh, this happens quite systematically and uh, quite um, relentlessly. And. Uh, uh, so it, 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 on the one hand, attaches to the sort of torture porn genre as such. In fact, one reviewer quipped that it's like Saw 4 with a PhD <laughs> uh, because it's a, a smart movie. It has uh, a lot of elements of a sort of self-reflexive quality, mm -hmm. and uh, it's one of the things that's worth a asking about how, how it uses that. Um, but it also connects to a a concurrent cycle of movies about families being taken hostage. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that would include things like Firewall or uh, uh, Ransom or uh, that Bruce Willis movie. Uh, hostage. Hostage or um, uh, even things like um, The Glass House or, uh, you know, it's a whole cycle. None of these films did very well at the box office as far as I can remember. Um, the Glass House, Hostage, none of these, I mean, I think it maybe speaks to America's um, desire for the sort, of, the sort of explicit violence, the torture aspect of it to happen to either young people or foreigners, as in the case of, um, of Hostel, at least. I mean, it takes place primarily in, uh, in Eastern Europe, Slovakia, I think, and, you know, the people who are the victims are you know, backpackers of a certain, you know, 21, 22 year old, you know, demographic. I, I mean, is that something you think audiences are more willing to uh, accept? Well, I think it raises the question of why uh, these things persist. You know, <coughs> the Saw 4 cycle is, as far as I'm aware, the only really successful torture porn uh, manifestation. Uh, so the, the, it really becomes a question if we assume that the reason Hollywood produces what it does is because it's what the people want mm -hmm. and they think they're going to make money. Uh, given your accurate claim that they don't, <laughs> why do they keep coming back? Why does it remain uh, a cycle? It seems yeah. to me as if it's answering something else in the culture. Um, what do you think that is? Well, um, I, I guess I would say the following thing. Um, when Hanka made his version of Funny Games in 1997, he suggested that uh, he was making it as a response to American movies' fetishization of violence. 
and he was very disappointed because not many Americans saw it, though it was actually the first of his films to receive some kind of um, uh, release in the United States. Mm -hmm. In fact, before I saw it in 1997, I had not heard of Hanukkah. He is now, of course, regarded as one of the most important filmmakers working. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Funny Games, I think, has uh, challenged that a little bit because uh, uh, didn't it, it hasn't been very favorably received in either incarnation. In fact, when it was first shown at the Cannes Film Festival in 1997 in the Austrian version, uh, people, half the audience left. Uh, it, so it seems to me as if it has something to do, well, you know, violence in American <coughs> movies has often been a kind of displacement. In other words, when violence uh, started to appear in American movies in the late 1960s, in movies like Bonnie and Clyde, um, The Wild Bunch, Straw Dogs, Clockwork Orange, um, it uh, was widely understood as channeling all sorts of anxieties about the Vietnam War that were not present otherwise. In other words, there weren't any movies about the Vietnam War except for a couple of documentaries and John Wayne's The Green Beret. Um, movies about the Vietnam War did not begin to appear until the war had ended in the late 1970s. So, in other words, what, what appeared to be happening was that an awareness of a kind of mounting violence elsewhere and of potential American complicity in it made its way back into the movies in spite of the fact that it was also very literally repressed in that it wasn't there. Um, so the question for me, I guess, becomes, since these movies are not noteworthy for their dealing with any kind of social or political uh, things that are happening, as once again a kind of return of something that is repressed, um, what is that? Well, I think it takes different forms. <laughs> you know, this cycle took a, a pretty clear turn after 9-11, mm -hmm. and a number of the films that were were finished and prepared, ready to be released, were withheld uh, out of respect, mm -hmm. uh, uh, presumably. Um, Unfortunately, Glitter, where I carry's <laughs> film, was the only <laughs> film released the weekend after 9-11. It's an important distinction to make. I yes. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, so it seems to me as if it could be channeling certain kinds of inarticulated um, uh, fears and anxieties that come mm -hmm. out of sort of pre and post 9-11, and in some cases it's more explicit than others. For instance, the family in Firewall that gets taken captive, uh, is taken captive by a group of sort of very genteel British people, mm -hmm. and the family keeps asking them over and over, why do you hate us? And uh, it's a, a phrase with pretty obvious resonance of the sort of, you know, why do they hate us? Mm -hmm. That comes post 9-11. Hanka's a very interesting example of this. He's remade the film in 1997 specifically to address the American audience that he thought himself as ha having missed the first time. Unfortunately, he's missed it the second time too. But I, I guess I'd want to understand his uh, take on this in which the torture is presented in highly formalist terms, a kind of distanced uh, uh, mode of representation instead of the very visceral representation that you get in things like the Saw films. Um, uh, you know, it seems as if he wants to sort of expose, and indeed this is what he says. It's a, uh, a, an argument that you used to hear all the time. We are showing violence because there is violence in the world. We must show it in an ugly manner in mm -hmm. order to depict it. We're not exploiting it. We are attempting to critique it. Mm -hmm. Now, the people who make Saw 4 and, you know, the, the hostel and, and the whole thing are usually not making that argument. But Hanka is, and so I think there's an interesting uh, uh, set of questions to be asked about, about that. I think that's something that I tried to, I tried to keep in mind while watching uh, Hostel specifically because I thought um, Saw delivered at least uh, a, a level of suspense that I thought was, you know, fairly well done and um, I mean, I thought that the plot was fairly complex, and sort of the the the, uh, the resolution was kind of. I mean, I, I there was there were things I respected about the film, um, as were whereas Hostel, the entire movie. I think it's sort of like um, 
Americans don't really watch it for the sense of, of social critique. Uh, they watch it for the sort of uh, roller coaster ride aspect of it, where for me, once you ride a roller coaster, you sort of have a sense of accomplishment, even though you're scaring yourself that much. And uh, after Hostel, I mean, I felt like a sort of sense, a, a, a sick sense of accomplishment hmm. in having withstood this, this visceral uh, barrage of god awful torture. And uh, I mean, that was the only real, you know, quality, quality aspect of, of Hostel that I took from it. I, hmm. I didn't find the social critique. And uh, I think that's sort of why I lose interest in the genre as soon as I, you know, get the sense of accomplishment. I don't think it really offers anything very legitimate in terms of sort of genre study or, or commentary or anything like that. Well, one it seems like you feel the same way. Oh, uh, uh, well, only unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And that's the distinction because Hanka wants to appear very self-conscious. Uh, and he wants to suggest that there is something deeply unconscious about this violence mm -hmm. uh, and how it's represented. Uh, the obvious question to ask is, what is the role of sadism in mm -hmm. this? Isn't it, by definition, sadistic to want to go and see people tortured? And Hanka's answer is obviously yes. Yeah. And yet that uh, is disavowed that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in fact, he, he has his killers give a series of incompatible answers to the question, why are you doing this to us? Which the family asked several times. And at one point, one of the killers says, because I came from a broken home. And then at another point he says, because my parents treated me badly. Uh, at another point he says, because I'm from the lower class and you're bourgeois. You know, so in other words, mm -hmm. he, I, he's, he's uh, uh, drawing attention to the way in which these films sort of rationalize their violence because they almost always have some sort of explanation mm -hmm. for why it's happening. And it usually makes some gesture towards some kind of social critique. And Hanka would say that what really needs to happen is the unconscious forces that aren't being articulated should be brought to the surface. And presumably that's what he tries to do. Absolutely. Um, that's going to do it uh, for us for this episode of Scene on Screen. Uh, we're going to be right back with uh, Professor James Morrison to talk about his upcoming course for the fall semester 2008 uh, titled Hitchcock. And uh, you can guess what that one's about. <laughs> so uh, we'll see you next time.